Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. This is a pathology video on gastrointestinal pathology. This is the second in the series of videos on polyps of the intestine and covers the topic classification and hematomatous polyps. This is by Dr. CSBR Prasad, Professor of Pathology, Shidevra Jaras Medical College. And polyps of the GIT can be classified mainly into neoplastic and non-neoplastic polyps and for neoplastic polyps are equated with adenomas. So again I stress adenomas of GIT requires a qualifier that is dysplasia whereas adenomas in other parts of the body will not have this writer. Okay. So if you want to call something uh, adenoma in GIT it should have, it must have dysplasia. Then non-neoplastic and polyps can be due to inflammation, inflammatory polyp, homotomatous polyp or hyperplastic variety of polyps. And um, homotomatous polyps, so what are homotomas, I told you already, it is a jumbled mixture of tissue which is native to that site, okay, native to that site. Sorry, I will uh, redo again. Coming to homotomatous polyps, so what is homotoma? I told you that uh, it is a jumbled mixture of tissue native to the site or the organ. Uh, the best example is if you look, uh, look at uh, the lung homotoma. So in the lung you will see the um, cartilage, respiratory epithelium, vessels, smooth muscle, everything. So they have an organization. So cartilage gives strength to the uh, bronchial tree and the smooth muscle uh, around the bronchial tree and uh, mucus secreting glands, respiratory epithelium lines the bronchial lumen and this ends in alveoli. Whereas if the, uh, if the same elements that is uh, cartilage, respiratory epithelium, smooth muscle and uh, other epithelial elements be mixed in a jumbled way without any organ, uh, uh, organoid formation then it becomes hematoma. Okay. And uh, this is sporadically, it can occur sporadically or as component of syndrome. This is very, very important. So, homotomatous polyps are, are, are seem to be associated with some of the uh, syndromes. We will uh, cover that later. And it is rare. Importance is um, that uh, these fellows may have extra intestine manifestations and as I was telling, it may be present in many of the family members as homotomatous syndrome. So the uh, examples for this uh, homotomatous syndrome include uh, pute jagger syndrome, juvenile polyposis, Crohn syndrome and uh, Cronkite Canada syndrome and also tuberous sclerosis. These are all the examples for uh, wherein we may see homotomatous intestinal polyposis. And there is one more adenomatous polyposis syndrome which we will cover later. And coming to homotomatous polyps individually, juvenile polyposis and uh, these juvenile polyps focal malformations in the mucosal epithelium and lamina pro propria. And usually it is seen in very young children and uh, sometimes it is solitary and rarely it can be multiple. So when it is occurring more than three, more than three in number, then you will call it as juvenile polyposis. Grossly, they, they protrude like uh, lollipops with a stalk and uh, histologically you may appreciate dilated glands with inflammation within the gland or, gland or lumen and also in the lamina propria and in addition to that there may be ulceration of the overlying epithelium and they are tubular uh, glands. So whole uh, polyp is composed of tubular glands. Coming to pathogenesis of juvenile polyps uh, is not well understood. In autosomal uh, dominant fashion it may produce multiple polyps being called as polyposis syndrome and probably the pathology is transforming growth factor beta signaling pathways and uh, there are some other uncharacterized genes. Importance of this uh, juvenile polyposis is association of increased risk of colonic carcinomas, not as same as uh, just a sessile polyp or a single polyp in some of the persons. And uh, coming to next uh, polyposis that is um, uh, homotomatous polyposis syndrome is pure jigger syndrome. So these are the um, doctors who describe these cases. And it is autosomal dominant and the age of presentation is very young. 
before uh, you know, 15 years they present and multiple polyps, polyps and mucocutaneous hyperpigmentation is characteristically seen in PJ syndrome. So there is uh, increased risk of several malignancies, not only the GIT, they may also suffer from the increased risk of uh, cancers occurring in pancreas, breast, lung, ovaries and also testicles and uh, usually these are all sex called stromal tumors that can be appreciated in gonads. And this is mucocutaneous hyperpigmentation, um, a very well characterized uh, clinical finding which indicates the possible occurrence of uh, the polyps within the intestine. So pathogenesis is uh, the loss of heterozygosity involving a tumor suppressor gene known as LKB1 or STK label. So this regulates polarization of the cells and growth and metabolism of the cells which is deranged in the case of Peutz-Jeghers syndrome and uh, uh, you should know that very important point is in Peutz-Jeghers syndrome polyps are not pre-malignant. Adenocarcinomas can occur uh, arise independently of the polyps. So polyps are not uh, the culprits but adenocarcinoma can occur in anywhere in the GIT. And uh, this is the barium uh, series x-ray showing the polyp, multiple polyps in the uh, colon and you can appreciate on the upper half of the image the in the transverse colon protruding structures coated with this barium. So these are uh, hematomatous polyps occurring in pure jigger syndrome. So gross appearance, you can see that uh, you know, pedunculated polyps with a nodular surface are multiple. And morphologically, histologically, you may appreciate the presence of jumbled mixture, that means smooth muscle running around uh, the lamina propria in an arborizing fashion with the glands lined by single layer of columnar type of epithelium which mimics the normal gland. So this arborizing uh, smooth muscle extensions into the um, lamina propria is characteristically seen in the case of pure trigger amatomatous polyp. So diagnosis, um, multiple polyps in small intestine, mucocutaneous hyperpigmentation, positive family history and demonstration of uh, genetic mutations involving loss of heterozygosity of uh, LKB1 and DSTK11 gene. And uh, these fellows must be uh, must uh, undergo surveillance in order to catch the early occurrence of um, the carcinoma, adenocarcinoma in the large intestine. So routine surveillance is uh, necessary not only to identify the occurrence of adenocarcinoma in the pelvis, uh, in the GIT and other uh, areas like gonads, breast. You should screen these patients regularly in order to catch. Uh, the cancers occurring at a very early age. Because of increased risk of uh, colonic cancers, routine surveillance of JIT, pelvis and gonads is typically re recommended in pure jigger syndrome. And coming to other uh, syndrome like uh, Cowden syndrome, it is again associated with uh, hematomatous polyps, uh, dominant uh, fashion it is acquired and uh, loss of het heterozygosity involving P10 gene. P10 gene and in addition to that these patients uh, have a characteristic feature like macrocephaly, intestinal hematomatous polyps, benign skin tumors, benign skin tumors, increased risk of GI malignancy as usual with that or any other hematomatous polyp. Other cancers also can occur in these patients like uh, breast cancer, follicular carcinoma of thyroid and endometrial carcinomas. You can see that small inaccuracy appearing nodules or uh, the tumors involved in the skin, especially in the nasolabial four. This is uh, the, what you call that, uh, benign skin tumors. And when you see this multiple benign skin tumors, possibility of uh, Cowden syndrome has to be thought of and the colonoscopy may reveal intestinal polyps. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe by clicking the button subscribe.